morning. I'm Crystal Welker. We are coming on the air with breaking news with huge implications for one of the criminal cases against former President Trump. A judge in Georgia just ruled that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who brought Georgia's election interference case against Trump, can stay on the case, but with big conditions after a motion was made to disqualify her. It comes following accusations she had an improper relationship with a special prosecutor she hired for the case. Willis and that prosecutor have acknowledged a relationship but denied anything improper. I want to get right to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Laura, there is a lot at play in today's decision. Help us break it down for us. Some tough language in here as well. Some tough language indeed, Kristen. This is not the result that the district attorney, Fonnie Willis, wanted, but it's certainly not the fatal blow that it could have been if Donald Trump and his co-defendant had got their way. So let's remember what the original ask was. The ask was to have the DA removed completely from the case over an alleged ethical conflict of interest of having her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, her then boyfriend, former boyfriend, lead the Trump prosecution. Trump and his co-defendants had alleged that there was a financial entanglement, that the two were taking last lavish vacations together, and that that was all while the time that the state was actually paying his salary. That was the conflict that was alleged. The judge in this case this morning saying the defendants did actually not prove an alleged or did not prove an actual conflict of interest from all that financial entanglement. However, the judge is saying there is an appearance of conflict, given how all of this played out, given all of the evidence that came out during the days-long hearing there in Georgia. The judge is saying the DA essentially has two options now. As you laid out, Kristen. She can either remove herself and her entire office from the case completely, which would be a severe blow, or she can remove Nathan Wade from the case, which is perhaps much easier to do, and anybody else could certainly step in his shoes as opposed to wiping out the entire prosecution team. There is certain language in here that it, I, if I'm the district attorney, I find very troubling. Some of um, the tone that the judge is using, talking about the allegations against her, but there's other language where in other ways he sort of exonerates her and says the evidence didn't go as far as Trump and his co-defendant had suggested. But again, bottom line here is the DA now has a choice to make. The indictment stands. It has not been dismissed, but this is going to be a choice for her to make, or it cannot just go on as status quo as normal, Kristen. And Laura, let's just tick through some of the language here. The accusation was that the district attorney benefited financially from this relationship with Nathan Wade, the top prosecutor, her ex-boyfriend. And the judge ruled the defendants have not presented sufficient evidence indicating that the expenses were not roughly divided evenly. That was really the core of this case, right, Laura? Yes. Trying to establish that link that she somehow benefited financially from this. That, that's exactly right. That, that was the whole sort of crux of it. And they kept pressing that even if they couldn't show an actual conflict, it just smelled funny and it looked bad. And the judge says this, which I think is notable. The district attorney chose to continue supervising and paying Wade while maintaining such a relationship. She further allowed the regular and loose exchange of money between them without any exact or verifiable measure of reconciliation. This lack of a confirmed financial split creates the possibility and appearance that the district attorney benefited. And that's the crux of it, Kirsten. Because of that appearance, that's why he's now giving her this choice to make, again, between having him removed or removing herself, which obviously she wouldn't want to do. And Laura, finally, just very quickly, big picture here, what does this all mean about when this case may actually go to trial? And is it fair to say this has already delayed any potential trial date? Oh, certainly. This, this entire uh, sort of, um, this entire sort of debacle has derailed the case for months now. We've, we all remember the televised hearings that went on for days. There's still no trial date set in this case. Obviously, the district attorney wanted to try it before the election. I would be shocked if that happened. And so this entire sort of, um, again, sort of de de has derailed a little bit of the case. Again, it's not a fatal blow. The indictment still stands, but this has certainly um, provided a, a problem for her office to now resolve quickly. All right, Laura Jarrett, thank you so much for that and helping us understand this complicated ruling. NBC's Blaine Alexander was first to report the news of the ruling this morning. She joins us now from Atlanta. Blaine, as I'm reading through this court document, I'm struck by some of the language that the judge used. He calls this a tremendous lapse in judgment. 
He refers to the appearance of impropriety. So he's not removing the DA from the case, but he's not letting her off the hook either. You know what, Kristen, he does not hold back in essentially scolding the DA, kind of basically saying, listen, yes, there is not actual uh, incongruency here, but this does not look good. This looks bad, and he's letting her know that. When we talk, though, about appearances, though, Kristen, I have to kind of break out and just widen out and talk about the fact that not only has this really just dominated this conversation over the past two and a half months, remember, as you and Laura were just discussing, this essentially ground this case here in Georgia to a halt. This is the case that many legal experts were calling the most legally perilous against former President Donald Trump. And for the past two and a half months, none of the facts of the case or anything have been discussed. But in addition to what's happening here at the Fulton County Courthouse, we also have to look at the fact that it has sparked other investigations into this district attorney. We know that just a couple of blocks away, there's a Republican-led state Senate committee, in fact, that's investigating these very allegations. And in fact, the chairman told me that he expects to subpoena Fonnie Willis in the coming weeks to get her to come down and testify at the Capitol. There was a bill that was signed into law by the governor just this week, giving lawmakers oversight over state prosecutors. So even though, yes, this does essentially give Fonnie Willis and her team the green light to continue on this case, with, of course, making the change of removing Nathan Wade from the case, there are so many other ways that this has become sidetracked, and we expect that those will continue uh, in the months to come, uh, Kristen. A couple of other things that I want to point out, though. I've spoken with a source who is familiar with the judge's thinking, and just a little bit of interesting context about the timing of this. This order has been written for more than a week now. That's certainly interesting. He's been tweaking it. He's been fine-tuning it, but that tells me that he made his decision soon after hearing the summation arguments uh, from the attorneys a couple of weeks ago. The other thing, though, that it tells me, of course, all of this is tied to politics. When we look at the ballot. Donald Trump is on the ballot in November, but Fonnie Willis and Judge Scott McAfee are also running for re-election. The judge has drawn a couple of uh, opponents in this case. That happened last week, but the fact that this was written before that shows basically that there was no political kind of leanings in the fact that he has opponents and when he drew this. The other thing that I'm learning is that security was a major factor. Mm. The judge has already received a number of threats against him and against his family. He has two young children. And so why put this out today? The source tells me that that allows for him to put proper security measures in place. He'd been working with the sheriff's office this week to make sure that that security was in place before this order was released, Kristen. Uh, really fascinating, Blaine. The judge, Judge McAfee, mm -hmm. in his early 30s, talk a little bit about what you have witnessed in court. Of course, that surprise testimony by Fonnie Willis herself, Nathan Wade, taking the stand, Fonnie Willis's father even taking the stand to talk about the fact that the family typically pays for things in cash, and that's why there wouldn't be a more robust written record of the financial transactions between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade. This really was a spectacle that unraveled there. It absolutely was. I mean, we got into personal details of the district attorney and her relationship with Nathan Wade. We heard about her preference of Grey Goose vodka over wine. I mean, these are things that nobody would have ever would have thought would have entered the conversation when you're talking about the prosecution of Donald Trump. And so, yes, the other thing, of course, the one thing that stands out here in Georgia is that all of this is televised. All of this is playing out on live TV. And so when we talk about that appearance going forward and kind of what that looks like for the case, Aside from the legal implications here, certainly that appearance is very, very crucial as well. One important note I want to add about Nathan Wade, Kristen, he's somebody who's been on this from the very beginning. You know, it's very important to remember that he was brought on to lead the special grand jury back in 2022 when they started bringing in witnesses, that eight-month period where you kind of had testimony and the investigative part of all of this. So he really is, some could argue, uh, perhaps one of the more familiar people with the facts of this case. So the fact that he is ostensibly going to have to leave, that's certainly notable as well, con uh, considering his longevity on this case, Kristen. Well, the Trump team's goal was to delay, delay, delay. And in this case, at least, they have been effective at that. Blaine Alexander, incredible job breaking this news today. Really appreciate it. That does conclude our NBC News special report. We will now return many of you to the Today Show, and we continue coverage on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com. And tonight on Nightly News, I'm Kristen Welker. Thanks so much for watching. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.